I'm six years old and I'm crouched in right field during t-ball practice in Iowa City, Iowa, ready for action. What I lack in hand-eye coordination, I make up for in sheer hustle. And so when a pop fly comes my way, I run and I dive and I shout, I've got it, I've got it! And I miss it. <laughs> Across the field, a kid yells, are you a boy? You sound like a boy. And at first I think, duh, I'm a girl. I'm wearing a ponytail, I'm not a boy. But then I realize what he's talking about. I remember all those times in church during worship when I sing in falsetto to stay with the melody. And the pitch of my voice as a six-year-old girl will be the same as it is 30 years later as a grown woman. But for a six-year-old girl, that is extraordinarily deep. It's a boy's voice. I've just never been called out on it before. And in that moment, I am flooded with shame and embarrassment. And I think, God, this is unfair. I am already the only Asian kid in my school of white Iowans. Do I also have to be the girl that sounds like a boy? And I add my voice to the list of things that I hate about myself. After that t-ball practice, I get really good at staying quiet and blending in. I stop singing during church, and I reach a sad pinnacle of my childhood when I'm on the playground one day with a group of girls, and one of them says, well, we're all white here anyway. And I think, yes, they've forgotten that I'm Asian and that I'm different. And I convince myself, too, that I'm just a shy and quiet person who doesn't have much to say or much to offer. And this could have kept going this way, um, but then I left Iowa for college in Boston, and I saw that the world outside of Iowa was not monolithic, and actually Iowa wasn't, surprisingly to me, the arbiter of coolness. <laughs> <laughs> And I, when I arrive on the college campus, I think, maybe I can find my voice here. But it turns out it's not that easy. I carry my tray through the freshman cafeteria, trying to find a place to sit down. And I realize I don't really belong at the table of Asian kids from California who talk about mochi and bubble tea and things I have never heard of. And I definitely don't belong at that table of elite prep school kids. And so I muddle my way through freshman year, thinking maybe my voice is not worth listening to. And after that year, that summer, I try to get as far away as possible. And I find myself in China, ostensibly volunteering in an orphanage, but really I'm just escaping. I don't know the first thing about kids, but I show up every day and they give me babies to feed, toddlers to practice walking with, and kids to play with. And one of them, the staff members finds out that I play piano. They rake up a keyboard, and they have me do music therapy each day with the kids. And they want me to sing, but I tell them, no, 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 no I, don't, I don't sing. Until one afternoon, when all the staff members are at their weekly meeting and I'm alone in this room of 20 to 30 kids and they're all in their cribs because it's nap time, but they're awake and they're crying. And as I walk around this room, it really hits me then how awful it is that these kids spend most of their days in a crib, even the four and five year olds. And these kids don't have parents to snuggle them at night. And these kids don't have mothers to wipe away their tears. And without realizing it, I break out into song. And I sing Amazing Grace because it's the only song that I know all the verses to. I walk around the room singing and I place my hands on each child, trying to soothe them. And I start to cry. And I cry because this world is an unfair place. And it's not unfair in the way that I thought it was when I was the six-year-old girl with the boy's voice. It's unfair in a much worse way. Funnily, these kids don't care that my voice is awkwardly deep or that I'm off key. 
They asked me to keep singing that afternoon and every day after that, and in doing so, they save me. They take me out of my self-pity and my self-absorption, and they show me that there are things in the world worth caring about that are more than just the pitch of my voice or how I might fit in. They help me find my true voice, and they show me that I need to use that voice to advocate and to encourage and to heal. And so every day that summer, I lift my voice in worship and in gratitude. And I thank God for these kids, and I sing to them, and I sing for them. I once was lost, but now am found. Thank you.